everyone and welcome back to That Disney Girl. So this week we are going to be talking Disney theories and if you've seen anything on my channel you know that I love Disney theories but this time I looked at an article that BuzzFeed put out a few years ago that was talking about really creepy Disney theories. So I thought how fun would it be if we tried to debunk all of these theories and see which were true, which were not, and what kind of inspired them. I mean, how many ghosts can Disney have? Kind of a lot is the answer, so let's get to that. So I've done a whole bunch of research to figure out if these theories are true or not, and I'm gonna link all of my research down below, so if you wanna see any of that, definitely check it out. And I will link that BuzzFeed article down below, so that's another fun article to read. Okay, so obviously this is me from the future, and I was just editing this video, and I found out that although this BuzzFeed article had 17 different creepy theories, a lot of these theories, which I did figure all of them out, if they were true or if they were fake, some of them were just really talking about tragic fatal accidents that happened, and there wasn't like a creepy theory to go along with it, just that something really terrible happened, and that's it. And although a lot of these points were very true, I don't really think that a fatal accident is something that would qualify as a creepy Disney theory. It's just a fact. And plus, I like to keep this channel more of a happy place, and I don't really want to dwell on someone else's really sad happening. So I've decided that I am going to just cut out all of those parts of the video and continue on with anything that was actually a creepy Disney theory. Now, if any of these fatal accidents could link to like a ghost sighting or something, I'm going to still talk about that. But if it was just something tragic that happened, I'm not going to harp on that. It's not really something we need to talk about. And now let's head back to a more tanned version of myself. So number two is that there is a spirit of a little boy that haunts the haunted mansion. Now when I was reading this theory online, it was saying that a mother had a son who had passed away and she decided that she was going to scatter his ashes inside of the haunted mansion and since this wasn't his dying wish, he's kind of just been crying, wanting to have freedom from this trapped state that he's been in in the haunted mansion. After reading about this, you can see that some cast members have claimed to see the little boy. I've seen different YouTube videos of people saying that they've seen this little boy. I actually saw one YouTube video which had me going for a second. It was really well done. Spirits with your tambourine. What's going on? Oh, it's him. It's, it's Joshua. Oh my god. Oh, what is he Obviously, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this was fake. If you don't think it's fake though, and you've had different experiences, definitely let me know in the comments. I would love to be able to be proven wrong and you know, to see if any more spooky ghosts are in the haunted mansion. But for now, I'm going to have to say that I don't think that this one checks out. Number three, I think is a little bit silly. The characters on It's a Small World come to life when they are unplugged. No, <laughs> they don't do that. Number four is that Walt still haunts his firehouse apartment on Main Street in Disneyland. Now, I don't think I would use the word haunt and Walt in the same situation. I'd say maybe he's still gracing us with his spiritual presence. So if you know anything about that firehouse apartment, you know that the lamp is always gonna be on, signifying that Walt is always kind of present in the park. Now before they started doing this, when the cast members would come in to clean the room and the apartment, they would turn that lamp off at the end of the night. And it was weird because one time when a cast member was cleaning it, they turned the lamp off, walked away, and then it turned back on and they turned it back off. They left the apartment and as they were walking out, they could see that the light was turned back on. So they had to kind of go back up and turn that light off again. So the theory here is that Walt is still in the apartment and he didn't want us turning the light off. So what Disneyland did was they didn't turn it off. It's on forever. Now, is this cast member's story true? I don't know, but I like to believe it is. So let's keep this one with a yes. And number five is that Disney is kind of like an unspoken cemetery and that people love to drop their loved one's ashes all over the parks. Now this one is definitely true. Many people want Disney to be their final resting spot. I mean, hey, I wouldn't hate that, but it's not something that you're really allowed to do, but a lot of people do bring the ashes of their loved ones over to the parks and they try to scatter them there. This is something that the Disney parks have started to realize is becoming a lot more of a common thing and cast members are now trained to look out for it and how to handle it. So if you get caught, you are definitely going to be in a lot of trouble for doing this and depending where you dump those ashes, they're probably going to get swept up at some point and confiscated. I wouldn't recommend it, but next time that you're in Disney and and you're on Pirates of the Caribbean, just think, someone's ashes are probably in that water. 
So number six is a really cool one and it is that a former employee actually haunts Hollywood Tower of Terror. Now I actually know a whole lot about this whole theory and if you want to watch it I have another whole video for you to check out so I'm going to link that down below but basically I found footage on this. I found different cast member stories and it's basically saying that somebody had a heart attack, one of the cast members, while loading people onto platform D and now this guy kind of just roams around the entire attraction and definitely through the lines and sometimes you're gonna have some complications on platform D and it blames this cast member. And oddly enough, me and my friend were talking about all of these theories at work today and she told me that she had some weird experiences on Tower of Terror. She said some really freaky ones, but then she mentioned that when she was waiting in the boiler room in line just to get into the ride, she saw a man that was running back and forth throughout the queue and she feels like she was the only person who saw that, but when I heard that I thought that was really weird because it really matches up with this whole theory. So if you want to dive deeper into that, definitely check out that video linked down below. It's a really creepy one. Definitely great to get you in that Halloween spirit. So number seven is that the seance book inside of the Haunted Mansion is actually a 14th century book of witchcraft. And I'm not talking a fake one, I'm talking a real witchcraft book. If we know anything about Walt, we know that he did like to have real things inside of his attractions. That's why you're gonna find a real skull when you go into Pirates of the Caribbean. If we're thinking about Jungle Cruise, although it is animatronics, Walt did want a real live animals inside of that ride. And when we're looking at the Haunted Mansion, it seems that maybe he wanted some real objects in there too that kind of fit that haunted vibe. Especially since the Haunted Mansion was originally going to be the Museum of the Weird to walk through haunted attraction museum style. I think that it makes total sense that maybe some real life haunted objects were going to be put into that attraction and they're kind of like a homage putting them in the current haunted mansion that we have today. So the theory goes that cast members kept trying to get this book propped up so that when people are going through the attraction they could see it, but for some reason it just always kept falling down. It really wanted to be shut and down and not seen as like a prop. And there was one cast member who thought that this was all baloney, did not believe it at all, and then they were going through doing their kind of walk through the attraction at nighttime, and he jokingly just smacked it down onto the table, and then suddenly his hand started to burn. I don't know if I believe this. I'm gonna go ahead and say that I think this is not true, but I really like the idea that maybe the seance book that was there is a real life witchcraft book. I think that would be super cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep believing that, and if you know if that is true or not, definitely let me know because I wasn't able to get a clear distinction on it. Number eight is a popular one, and that is the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction is haunted by a spirit named George. If you've ever heard cast members talk about George, anyone who works on the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction knows to say, good morning, George, or good evening, George, when they're coming in in the morning or leaving at nighttime, you got to acknowledge George. George is a friendly ghost. He just wants that acknowledgement. He wants to be known that he was here. And the story of George is that he was someone that was helping to build the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction as it was coming to fruition. And he was a welder and he ended up being crushed. That's actually one version of the story. The other version is that he wasn't crushed, but he fell from the top bridge of the fire burning scene when you're going into that little village. Either way, the story is that he died here and now he lives in the attraction for Forever. This is probably one of the Disney theories that most people are going to swear by. No one wants to give this one up. So what's the truth? Was there someone named George that actually died while building this attraction? There was no George. <laughs> so George is not a real person, not something that ever existed. So on theme park tours, they bring up that if you've ever checked out the book Reality Land, the author in this book kind of hints that George may be an amalgamation of different deaths that have happened in the park in construction of attractions. But if you disagree with me and you've had your own experiences with George, I would love to be proven wrong, so let me know down below. Number 10 is that the People Mover is haunted. Now, I don't think the People Mover is necessarily haunted and that's the reason that it shuts down, but there have been multiple deaths of young people on this attraction. One of those tragic stories is that there was a San Diego high school graduate who decided that he was gonna hop from car to car. He ended up getting stuck in between one of the cars and the People Mover car. And a lot of the stories that I've read about the People Mover being haunted states that it is a young boy. So maybe there's a connection here, but it's not one that I've ever experienced myself. 
Number 13 is that someone hung themselves while in the Small World attraction. This is actually one that most of the Disney community has debunked and decided that it was not true. There was a photo that was released with a little bit of a blurb saying that this family was on the attraction and then suddenly all the lights went up. They said that there was an emergency, that everyone needed to be evacuated from the ride. And when this family decided to take a picture of the ceiling, there's definitely something hanging from the ceiling. If this photo was real, this is a super tragic thing to have happened. But if we take a really close look at it, it definitely looks like it's a really small thing and looks like it could totally be a doll. It's in these red overalls and since we have so many dolls in the Small World attraction, I think this is just a really sad prank that a cast member might have done putting that doll up there and then it just sadly happened that somebody saw it. And who knows, maybe the story about this family is totally fake and it's even a person who worked on the attraction that took that photo. All of these things could be skewed, but in the end, I don't think that anybody actually hung themselves at this attraction because we see no news reports or anything else about this incident, so I think we're gonna chalk it up to a fake one just meant to creep us out a little bit. So another one is that there is a ghost that kind of haunts Space Mountain. It's a ghost that is very friendly and rides with you and his name is Mr. One Way. I guess because he's only going one way. I don't know. I don't know why that's his name. But he has this reddish brown hair and when you see him he's kind of going to be lit up by this green orb. I mean, I totally don't know if this is true. I think this is definitely just like a bit of a folklore tale, but if you've ever seen him, I definitely want to know. Number 15 is that a man died on Disney's Haunted Mansion with a heart attack because he was scared so much. So no one's actually ever died on the Haunted Mansion attraction, so I think that we're gonna quickly debunk this one. Also, it's not really the scariest of attractions if you've ever been on it, and what Disney has done throughout the years is they've really toned down the rides, especially in Disneyland and Disney World, they've made it so that the scares aren't too crazy. You're not gonna get too many jump scares, just a few of them. It's a kid-friendly ride, so to have a heart attack on this ride due to being scared, it's not really something that's too probable. Number 16 is that there is an abandoned water park at Disney that plays music over the speakers, and I can quickly say that this is going to be true. Disney's River Country opened up and it has a whole lot of spooky stories that go along with it, including a death causing amoeba that actually ended up killing a young boy at this attraction, and so many other creepy things. I mean, let's consider the fact that this entire water park lay abandoned for over 10 years, decaying, just getting really creepier and creepier as time went on. And if you want to hear more about this, I have a really cool video exploring the abandoned state of the water park, seeing the reasons why it closed, learning about the history, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm gonna link that down below, but Disney's River Country is definitely a piece of Disney history that you wanna get your head around. And number 17, I mean, I didn't do too much research into this one, but it's that Walt Disney used Club 33 as a spot to meet with the Illuminati. I don't think this is true. I read one article, it kind of didn't make sense. I, I didn't even really understand what I was reading and I wasn't following it for too long and I don't think that Walt even had time to deal with something like the Illuminati. He was too busy making his movies and creating TV shows in a whole entire park and then a whole new entire park. He was a family man, he was a father, he was a boss, he was a brother. He had way too many things on his plate to also be throwing this into the mix, but if you have any evidence, you can also let me know that down below. And once again, almost everything that I mentioned to you just now was done through research. And I don't know if everything that I said was right or wrong. If you know about something that I said that was maybe wrong or something that you can attest to was right, definitely let me know down below. And if you know any more Disney theories, and even when I was doing my research, I saw that there is a whole bunch more if we're talking about the creepy Disney theory category. Let's definitely have that discussion down below. And if you have evidence for any of those theories, I want to know. So just remember that Disney is still the magical place that we all know and love it to be, but now we have just a little bit of a creepy side to it that's going to get us really ready for Mickey's not-so-scary Halloween party. Okay, so that's it for now. I will see you all real soon. Don't get too spooked.